All right, guys. So we got all our seals in here for the John Deere cylinder. I'm gonna go through the process. I'm gonna show you guys how I reassemble the gland, the rod, and the cylinder, and then the process that I use to actually test it once everything's finished. So let's get started. So if any of you guys actually re redo your own cylinders, this little tool right here makes the world a difference. Actually putting in new cups and seals on the inside, turns it into a kidney bean shape, rolls it right in, pops it right in. No issue, no fuss, and no muss. So next we're gonna be taking the wire, the wire ring, kind of fold it up over top of itself a little bit. It's gonna snap right into place. And then the H series wipe. So you can kind of see if you was to cut this apart, it would kind of look like an H on the inside. If you was to cut it apart, it snaps right into the groove. And then the outside actually takes the O ring with the backup first. These backups generally, I don't know if you'd be able to see it here in the picture generally have a con concave recessed area here for the o-ring so we're going to put that on like this make sure everything's kind of tightened down on it and then we're going to install the o-ring and that is the assembly for the packing packing gland. Alright guys, so one little quick check you can do to see if your rod is bent. This is just in case you don't have a lathe. You can actually lay a flat edge on it, like so. Take you a pretty decent little flashlight. You can shine through that edge right there. If this rod was bent, the light would actually pass through up underneath the crack. So we'll just kind of go through here and kind of see, kind of see what I'm doing. Just kind of shine it right there on the crack. Just kind of pass it through. So, just one little quick bush check that you can do in case you don't have a lace, just in case you think you've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bow or a little bit of a bend in the rod. So next we're going to start with the rod assembly. So we're going to start going and start the assembly process. A couple of things to remember. Do not forget your nut first before you reassemble with the gland. You'll have your nut. You'll have your snap ring. Then you'll move on with your gland. I like to put a little bit of oil here on the shaft. Just kind of, kind of help lubricate everything up. Put a little bit of oil in here to help kind of lube everything up. And just slowly, easily work it on. Next, we're going to start with our piston assembly. We got to get ready to put the piston onto our shaft. Um, now, there are some times that you will have to watch how you install the piston because both sides can kind of look the same. This right here is not going to be one of them, so it's actually going to have to be here. It kind of sets or recess here that the shaft will actually sit down in. You'll just slide it on. You'll actually put your nut on. Uh, Sometimes you don't have to put any Loctite on them. Um, I generally at least like to put a little bit of red Loctite, just a dot, just enough to try to kind of help hold it. Even though this is a nylon locking nut, still just kind of a little bit extra insurance, uh, just to make sure that everything works and everything kind of stays where it is. Go ahead and add just a little bit of red Loctite here to the to the thread. Like I said, not a lot. I just put, like I said, just a little drop kind of up here towards the top. Then we're going to take 
take our take our impact gun, run the nut down on there. Now we're ready to put everything into the shaft. We'll wipe all that off and then uh, get everything lubed up there and we'll insert this into the barrel. Throwing and everything cleaned and lubed. Now we're going to try to put the uh, rod back in it. So we're going to start out by putting a little bit of oil here on the piston. Kind of go all over it. Give it a couple of little taps here with a dead blow. Try to get it started. Now with all that in, should be able to actually drive the uh, drive the rod back up in there a little bit. Then we're going to go on with the assembly of the gland here. So the gland will have to be countersunk in there, and then we'll actually have to uh, countersunk it back in, countersink it back in deep enough to put the lock ring on, and then actually pressurize the back tube, push everything out, then put the lock nut on it. Let's get it on down in there just a little bit deep. So with that right there on, we're going to take the brass hammer, we're going to drive it down in there like I said, back into the actual tube. Try to get it even here on both sides. Sunk back in there. You can actually take the ring. We'll have to compress the ring here. Sometimes it's easier if we actually drive the uh, drive the gland a little deeper in there. You get a little bit more room to work to manipulate it. We'll drive the. Drop the gland on down in there a little bit more. I will actually set the ring down in here. These are stiff, so don't be afraid to get a little rough with them. So now, we're actually going to pressurize the back, let the piston and everything come up, 
push the gland outward to where it's actually locked in on that ring right there. And then we'll tighten the nut up on it, then we'll be ready to pressure test it. What I've done is I've hooked the uh, back of the cylinder up here to the air compressor and uh, we're going to try to pressurize it a little bit and just like that it actually pushes the gland out now with the gland pushed out we can actually tighten down the nut on it and then we'll be ready to uh, pressure test the actual cylinder make sure there's no leaks make sure there's no bypassing in it So we're not going to use an actual nut buster on this um, and we're really just looking to just kind of tighten it down. These right here generally you can kind of put you about a two foot pipe on it on this tool. Tighten this right here down. Make sure everything is nice and tight on it. You really want to make sure it's good and tight. Take the pipe wrench that you had before. Set the pipe wrench on here. Put a little small chigger pipe back on it. And there you go. Got the uh, power pack down there hooked up here to the cylinder. So we're going to test the functionality functionality of the cylinder just in and out, and then we're going to try to do a bypass bypass test. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so the functionality looks really good. See no leaks, no bypassing coming up the end of the seal here. So I'm going to show you a trick that I was taught there in the mines. Just a real simple way to tell if the piston is actually bypassing. You actually end up capping off the uh, extend end or retract end, depending on, depending on what motion you're going through the back end of the cylinder. So I've got a ball valve on each of these. So I'm going to turn the, valve, the ball valve off. Pressure rise to retract in here. And then if it if the piston is actually bypassing, it will physically push this rod out. The reason for that being is there's actually more surface area on that piston. So as that oil is bypassing over that ring, you've got that surface area there that'll actually force it out. Even though you're pressurizing this to retract it, that surface area is pushing it out this way. So it seems to be pretty good. Uh, that power pack down there puts out about 25, 2800 psi. So if it was definitely if it was bypassing, it would it would be flowing over, and you'd actually be able to watch this cylinder push out. So, well, guys, I thank you for watching, and we look forward to making some more videos for you.